Hey everyone, welcome back to I'm being attacked to the binding of Lorgen. Um we are in not I was I almost said Sans Fortress, but this is not Sans Fortress. This is the Duke's archives. Seath's fortress, if we're gonna go with that. Yeah, so first time I actually think we're in the Duke's archives. So this is gonna be interesting. I have like no idea, and I think I said this in the previous episode, where the boss is going to be located. I'm assuming this will lead out into the crystal caves, just like the normal area would do, but then again I'm not sure. Honestly, as it currently stands, this was easier than how this area actually is. This area is kind of a bitch, you know, I'm not going to lie with the teleporting sorcerer. Okay, this is open. You know, with like the teleporting sorcerer, the enemies that get buffed, it's kind of hella annoying. Nice little vista. Low poly little view, but hey, who cares? So yeah, um... I'm gonna get real with you for a second, guys. Um, I did some digging on how, like, progression in this game works. And I discovered that, technically, this game doesn't end. See, I was under the impression that it worked maybe somewhat like Dark Souls... I mean, not Dark Souls, like the Binding of Isaac. Like, eventually, we'd do some runs and we'd reach, like, an ending. Apparently, this game doesn't have an ending. So you can just keep going playthrough after playthrough. Uh, of course, unlocking NPCs, which I'm kind of having trouble with. Like, not really getting any NPCs to spawn. I'm getting bosses to spawn. So, I was thinking about how many more runs I should do. And the only reason I'm saying that is because I have a ton of ideas for playthroughs. You know, sometimes I have like ups and downs of having ideas of games to play. There is a lot on my mind right about now. So I was thinking that maybe, maybe after this run, we can take like a little, well break, I would say. Not like call this the definite end, but kind of call it the end. And we will see if we can return to this game or not. Holy shit. <sighs> First of all, that is the world's slowest death. God damn. Hella dramatic. That's what I was thinking of. But it's just an idea for now. Um, of course, it doesn't... But like, we don't even know if I'm gonna finish the run this one. I don't know, this is stage... Three or not three, like five or six, more like. King Mornstein has been rescued. Who in the fuck is King Mornstein? Pretty sure that ain't a character in vanilla Dark Souls. Okay, anyways, it looks like there's no way to progress from here. So we're just gonna piece... I keep jumping. Fucking controller. Um. So yeah, that was, that was what I was uh, kind of thinking about. And maybe it will come to fruition. And maybe this will be the final episode. If it is, that's going to be kind of anticlimactic. But again, the only reason I'm doing it... Listen, we're 20 episodes in. This is fun. 
but I've done quite a few playthroughs at this point and again aside from the NPCs which from what I've seen don't do anything apart from give you different kind of starting bonuses or conditions you know we we can just go on forever you know if we want to with this wonder what's unlocked and what's not it looked like that wasn't unlocked something just fell to its death which means we could do have to go upstairs through the kind of normal progression but I'm gonna check it out I'm gonna check it out I think pretty much at this point the only area we've not had is Lost Isolith, I think. I think other than that we have had every single area. Maybe not Chasm of the Abyss. Although that place is a little bit... I'm not sure if you could have that. I guess you can have any area. Maybe like Lost Isolith doesn't work because like half the enemies would spawn in lava. But I don't know. I can like very distinctly remember that we've not had Isolith, which I'm actually not too mad about, believe me. Something is shooting at me, but it's not not doing not doing much. Interesting, I wonder if Oh there you are. Hello. Ouch. I wonder if we'll be able to go to the Crystal Caves, like it, whether it ca it counts it as a separate area or not. God, if you like, I do apologize. The reason I'm yawning is because it's fairly. Oh, hello. It's fairly late. I got the recording fairly late. I was busy today. I knew I would be busy, um, so I only got to like sit down and record now. Plus, you know, it gotta make January and the usual. But now I'm ready to sit down, conclude the night with some Dark Souls or Binding of Lordran. There you are. Okay, I would not have guessed that he was there. Uh, I think that's gonna be that's gonna be the money the money shot. I keep pressing the touchpad because, well, if you don't know, uh, I'm playing Dark Souls Two on my live stream currently, and of course. Dark Souls 2 famously, for some baffling reason, uses the PlayStation touchpad uh, to open menus and uses the start button to do gestures, which is completely ass backwards. And I'm glad it's something that didn't stick. So I'm gonna be I'm gonna be getting them mixed up probably tomorrow on Thursday when I'm streaming. Well, actually no, I'm gonna upload this on Friday because it's super late. So when I streamed yesterday, I probably got it mixed up as well. I saw the fog gate there. Which is interesting. God, these enemies can't even touch me. Something is like machine gunning us or trying to. Oh, there you are. Oh, it's not a fog gate. That legit locked looked like a fog gate from the distance. 
That was an interesting transition. Oh, hello. Ouch. Yeah, I think, you know, I think I've really, like, discovered that armor is the king in this playthrough. Or in this game. Like, you get a hella good armor set, again, enemies can't even really touch you. Okay, I was like, please let me pass. And I think... Nope. Alright then. See how you're playing at the game. My theory was that that door would need one of the keys to unlock. I guess that's not the case. Oh, that's why I was getting rapid fired like that because there's two of them. But again, like, like, look at this, this. I feel like um, one thing I've noticed with this mod for sure is that kind of mid-tier runs don't happen very often. And you know what I'm talking about? People who play the Binding of Isaac know that you can get those runs which are not an automatic win because you have tough enemies maybe you don't have the best items and you kind of need to be tactical that like doesn't happen in this mod I either have a completely shit run that is dead from the get-go or it's a wash which is interesting I mean I'll admit fully that this is probably mad difficult to balance because there's so many factors you have to take into account but I'm just saying that's something I've definitely noticed oh interesting Oh, get on my level with leather PvP. Shit. I lost the PvP fight. But you lost the fight fight. So yeah, that type of run really doesn't happen often here. Which means, again, that after a while the challenge kinda becomes non-existent and maybe I should go f use that soul which makes enemies more difficult I don't know okay I guess then crystal caves time shit I didn't check I did not check my timer. Oh well. I'm gonna have to like guess the 30 minutes. Are there gonna be two bosses here? Is it even possible to have two bosses? I'm just trying to think. I guess why not, you know? Oh, hello, Quell Air. I was gonna say, you know, that depending on what enemies we get, this place could be rough. Interesting that it makes that noise when you hit the crystal. Not my primary choice of sound effects, but hey, you do you, game. So if we get some like dick enemies to spawn on the invisible platforms like that things could be problematic. 
and then we have just slidey ass ledge. I'm more more worried. That, blah, God, I can't even talk. I'm more worried about the fact I hate this that my bonfire is very far away, so it's gonna be like mad annoying to come back here. I'm gonna ignore that mushroom. Oh, hello. <laughs> hey, I haven't seen many of you. God, you can't even tell Mimics like half the time. Acid eat heat. It's a dope spell. I actually got a lot of. Oh, hello. Dual bosses. We've had dual bosses before. I was gonna say, I wonder if the mechanic sticks. And it does. It's actually pretty interesting. Yeah, this might be a problem. From not nothing else, from the bleed perspective, and the can't see shit perspective. God, even the bleed didn't do shit to me. Okay, I think I can kind of tell where she is. And I know how to fight her. I know the idea is to stick her with a throwing knife. But still, fuck, this is annoying. God damn it. That was a lot of... What the hell is up with the first blood loss? That, like, didn't do anything. This might be a problem. We might be in trouble, boys. The issue is you cannot tell where her footsteps are. Which is, you know, meant to be the tactic and then you stick her with a throwing knife. Fuck. That blood loss mechanic is very interesting. Um, are you kidding me? I don't have you. Uh, poor K. I'm just gonna die. I'm just gonna die, aren't I? Because it's not gonna. Please, please just put me outside the boss. Huh? Did I break it? Did I break the run? Oh shit, okay. Okay, we gotta get rid of her ASAP Rocky. Motherfuck. This is... This is mega frustrating. Please tell me I have throwing knives. I don't shit. Okay. 
Okay, the aim here is not to get grabbed under any circumstance. Because that's the shit that puts you out of bounds. Where is she? This is gonna suck. I'm gonna have to chase her invisible ass around. Even if I kill... Yes. Don't tell me she's... She's invulnerable. I didn't know she was invulnerable. At least she stuns easily. Okay, get rid of her. Thank you. That was worth the damage. Because she is mad annoying. The only thing now is not to get grabbed by this fool and thrown out of the game world. That's a bad idea. Cool. Just die. Okay. Well, that was a very annoying boss combination. Nice. We got more treasure. <laughs> and we got naked. Alright. So we unlocked some stuff. Oh hey. A straight up Ornstein has shown up. That's very, very interesting. More oh Mornstein. I got you. Ring symbolizing unbreakable friendship. Increases the chances of encountering powerful enemies whose defeat can lead to superior treasure. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Well, here's the deal, guys. Um, as I said at the start, I think I'm gonna call it. I think I'm gonna call it not a final final wrap for this series but I think I'm going to take a break again it's just because I have a lot of playthroughs I play through ideas I mean a lot that I want to do and I think um, this was fun this was a very very fun run I had a great time but when you think about it it is just this in some form or another. Go through random areas, random enemies and rinse and repeat. Sure, we, like, we can unlock more treasures, but you know. That's basically it. There's not much else to it. So yeah, I think I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it up here. Thank you guys very much for watching. Again, not saying this playthrough will disappear forever, but for now, this is the finale of The Binding of Lordran. It's been fun. It's been a lot of fun. So thank you very much for watching, whether you watched one episode or the whole series. Thanks for commenting, for liking. As always, make sure to like this video as well if you're new. Subscribe here, turn on post notifications. See you on the streams and see you on my next playthrough. Take care and peace out. Goodbye.